What's that then? Hey, listen. A little Ron Green rant. I get this scripture sometimes, and I hear people mention it. People don't say much to me because I don't know why. Hey, man, if you got a problem, come to me. It ain't no big deal. I'm not going to bust you in the mouth. Well, it just depends on who you are. No, I'm just kidding. I would never hit nobody. I would be scared too. My hands hurt too bad, and it would affect my workout. And <laughs> We don't want to do anything to, to affect my time in the gym. 1 Timothy 4 and 8. Listen to this. For bodily exercise profiteth little. I know profiteth isn't a real word, but it's a King James word. We, we want to use the King James because we don't want to offend nobody. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. So they want to use that bodily exercise. Profiteth little. Ron, you work out too much. Ron. You know, why is it you want to squat 700 pounds you only weigh 175 at 50 years old? Ron, why do you want to leg press 1,000 pounds? Why, why do you want to do that? Let me tell you something. Change is not possible without some discomfort. you got to become uncomfortable. Let, let me give you an example. My 30 months in federal prison, I had become comfortable. I want you to realize that. Man, I had a routine. I didn't have to worry about a meal. I missed my kids. I missed them with everything inside of me. There was a part of me that wanted to bust out of that place and run home. But there was another part of me that was very comfortable with the idea that I knew what time I was going to get up. I knew I was going to go to chow. I knew what time I was going to be on the yard. I knew how many push-ups I planned to do. How many sets? Some days I would do 5,000 push-ups, 3,000 setups, and spend over an hour on the stepper and do ab wheels, and do pull-ups. And, and I was comfortable. I was comfortable teaching my class in the education. I was comfortable with my side hustle where I would take these drug dealers and teach them how to take legitimate business ideas and develop marketing plans. I was comfortable in that. When I walked out of those doors and out of those gates, there was a part of me that become very uncomfortable. Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. I wanted to run back, beat on that door, go back inside, crawl up in my bunk before they assign somebody else to it and cover my head with a blanket and say, please don't make me go home because I had become comfortable in my bondage. Change is not possible without a level of discomfort. Bodily exercise profits little. It does profit something. Now, what people want to use, they want to use this scripture to sit around on the couch. Let me tell you what I don't want to be. I don't want to be the guy that was in his 20s and is his 30s that was a bad dad, that worked 90 hours a week, that was a horrible husband, that just... Screwed everything up. The only thing I was good at was making money. That was it. I was good at nothing else. I was 300 pounds. I, I took handfuls of medication every day. It was a struggle to get my blood sugar under 300. I was about to have to get on insulin shots. I don't want to be the guy that looks at a scripture like this and it keeps me out of the gym saying bodily exercise profiteth little. I want to be the guy that wakes up every morning, will it wakes up some mornings at 3.30 writing the book. Most mornings at 4, 4.30, I get up and I spend hours in God's word. Why? Because I don't want to be the same guy that I was. <clears throat> Why? Because that guy didn't help nobody. That guy never got nobody at a rehab. That guy never sat down with a family and helped them overcome, understand how they could help their son, their grandson, their nephew, their husband, their wife, how to overcome addiction. That guy was sick. That guy couldn't get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and work till 9 every day and feel good because he put the right stuff in his body. That guy was the guy that sat on the couch at the end of the day, drinking beer, eating donuts, gaining weight, and being worthless. 
I don't want to be worthless anymore. But in order to become unworthless, in order to improve, I had to become uncomfortable. You know, what y'all don't understand, when I was leg pressing 765 pounds the other day, that was at the end of, of a leg workout. That was at the end of an hour and a half, four to 600 reps. When I crawled under that 545 pounds and squatted it three times, I had worked out so hard, I was trembling. Why would I do that? Because I don't want to be the same. The question is, what are you willing to do to not be the same? Or are you just comfortable in your dysfunction? Look at this verse. 1 Corinthians 9, 23 through 27. I do it all for the sake of the gospel. That's why I do it. I do it because I love people. I want to be an example of what God can do in your life. And I like pushing myself. Some of it may be a misfiring in my head. Some of it may not be 100% right. God will help me if it's not. That I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every act, athlete exercises self-control in all things. You know, you're an athlete. I, I set before you life and death. You see that you're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Right, Lay aside every weight and sin so that you can run the race. As a believer, people are watching you. And I'm just going to confess something to you. And with the exceptions of preachers that have admitted they got a problem and are trying to improve it, when you get behind that pulpit, man, and you're 200 pounds overweight, I'm not the only one sitting out there not listening to what you're saying. I'm, you listening to me? I'm not listening to what you're saying. I'm looking at the life that you are living, the inability to control your ability to shove crap in your pie hole. So, yeah, that's for all my preacher buddies. Anyway, this Ron Green rant. Y'all wanted them, here they are. You want to know what's in my head? Here it is. Every act's... Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. I want to take somebody with me. I know in order to take somebody with me, I got to be healthy. So I do not run aimless, aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body to keep it under control. Let me tell you something. The way you're eating... <coughs> isn't controlled. <laughs> you know, my clients that have been with me a while have to force their self to eat because we get their hormones under control. And this ain't a by design infomercial. This is something to fire you up, to get you to reach down on the inside of you where the Holy Spirit resides. And that self-control is a gift. Don't tell me you can't. Yes, you can. You can do all things, everything. You just got to want it. You just got to understand in order to change, you have to become uncomfortable. But I dis discipline my body and keep it under control. That's after preaching to others. I myself should be disqualified. We are called to be the salt and the light. Your lifestyle, your body, the way you look reflects the way you think. If you want to change the way you think, you got to become uncomfortable. Man, you got to have a routine. So does body I exercise just profit a little? It all depends on your perception. You know, if I'm doing it for Christ, it profits a lot. You know, my ministry is, is, is the addiction ministry. There's two sides of it. There's the food side. There's the dope side. Two sides that I've struggled with. Anyway, listen, if this made you mad, good. I'm not going to apologize. Be watching. I'm working on the unaddicted. I'm going to self-publish. I've heard from the Lord. 
So be watching for that really, really soon. I hope to be finished writing the book by the end of the month. Uh, there's going to be some interesting things in there about the car business. I've been quiet about the car business. I'm going to disclose a lot of stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm going to change some stuff around. So to try to, anyway, listen, I'm just going to put it out there. You need to be aware of, of, of exactly how rotten the car business is. Anyway, pray for us. If you want help, pay for it, can't pay for it, I don't care. Reach out to me. If you want to try to overcome your addiction to food, if you want to try to lose weight, if you want to try to get healthy and you can't afford it, you know I'll try to help you. I'll do anything I can. If you got a family member that's struggling with dope, you got you got a nephew, you got a you got an uncle, you got somebody that really wants help that's shoving heroin and fentanyl in their vein, reach out to me. I want to help them. You got anything, reach out to me. I want to help you. Anyway, I pray that God bless you richly the only way you can be blessed. And listen, listen, listen. You've got to become uncomfortable if you want to change. God bless you.